How's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be taking an up close and personal in depth look with the all new 467 horsepower 2015 Lexus RCF. Big thanks and shout out to Lexus for providing us this week long tester. As always, guys, this is going to be a detailed in depth review of the RCF. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, take it on a thorough road test, and show you many of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as the exterior. And so, Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let it run. Our tester is finished in ultra white and has a slight pearl effect to it, paired with the optional circuit red leather interior with carbon fiber across the doors and dash, not to mention brushed aluminum trim. In order to start, just make sure you have the key fob within the interior, put your foot in the brake, and hit the dash mounted button to go. The RCF features variable speed sensitive electric power assisted rack and pinion steering that has a very natural behavior to it. Engineers did an excellent job calibrating the power assist curve, making you feel even more connected to the road. A damperless intermediate shaft was added to the steering column to increase rigidity and subsequent responsiveness. It's just as smooth feeling as the ISF was and easy to toss into a corner. It has just enough resistance to keep it communicating. The thick bolstered three-spoke multifunction steering wheel is uniquely tailored for the F. It's wrapped in perforated leather, trimmed in blue and white stitching, and finished off with an F badge in the bottom. The RCF benefits from a revised version of the ISF's 8-speed sports direct shift transmission. Refined to handle the increased engine output, it's designed to deliver a more linear response to accelerator input and lead to a more dynamic feel overall. A torsion limited slip differential is standard, sending power to the rear wheels, while a torque vectoring differential is available as part of the optional performance package. If you've driven the ISF, the feel will be instantly familiar, only now you have a lot more power to play around with. There's four different driving modes you can switch through, Eco, Normal, Sport, and Sport Plus, which also adapt other vehicle systems accordingly based on fuel economy or performance needs. Placing the selector into manual mode locks up the torque converter from 2nd to 8th gear, allowing you to shift gears manually via the steering wheel paddles or the selector itself. Sport Plus, designed for greater performance on the track, allows the transmission to automatically downshift during hard braking for a corner, hold the lower gear longer for greater control, and then give the driver a greater power response on corner exit. In manual, upshifts occur in just 100 milliseconds accompanied by rev matching downshifts. When driving automatic, Sport Mode engages G-Sensor AI Shift Control, which takes information from the vehicle's G-Sensors to optimize gear ratios for more responsive acceleration when desired. Like you guys saw in my review of the RC350 F Sport, the RCF also has a reconfigurable instrument cluster, but it's a little bit different. There's four different displays depending on which drive mode you place the car in. It's very cool, placing it into Sport Plus also relocates some of your temperature gauges to the central tachometer. Unlike the F-Sport though, the tachometer does not slide left to right, but you still have a detailed driver information system to the left with the F-Performance pages. So let's go ahead and flip on the optional automatic triple beam LED headlamps and hazards. Both windows are fully automatic. So let's go ahead and check out the exterior. Upon closing the door, the vehicle will chime a few times to let you know it's lost detection proximity key fob. Last year, we had the fortune of testing out a 2014 ISF. That car, which is no longer in production, first hit the market back in 2007 and single-handedly launched the Lexus F Performance Division. Like M is to BMW or AMG is to Mercedes-Benz, Lexus F models are a cut above in terms of their abilities on the track and their more aggressive and dynamic demeanors. The second F product, as we all remember, was the LFA, an incredible V10 supercar that made quite a statement in limited numbers. With the RCF, the third all-new F product, Lexus continues to move forward in creating cars that are more fun to drive and more exciting to look at, without sacrificing the luxury we've come to expect. Just looking at it, you can tell the RCF is on a different mission than the RC350. 
Its dramatic styling is just as, if not more polarizing than the standard car. Combining wider wheels and tires, flared fenders and active rear wing, air scoops, cooling ducts and even available carbon fiber body features. Lexus really deserves to be commended with giving the cars a unique identity unlike anything else. Probably the most notable thing out back are the functional stacked exhaust tips, a trait inspired by the ISF. Of course, it's more than just styling, pretty much everything has been redesigned or upgraded including the chassis and suspension. An updated V8 engine makes it the most powerful Lexus V8 sports car ever. I see this car as a spiritual descendant of the old SC400 combined with the DNA of an ISF, quite the cool combination if you ask me. The RCF is longer by 0.4 inches, wider by 0.2 inches, and 0.2 inches lower than the RC350 we tested not too long ago. The additional length comes from packaging of the rear diffuser while the width comes from wider, laser brazed wheel arches. The styling is far more aggressive and purposeful than the standard car. Plenty of scoops, vents, and subtle body details make sure that the wind is continuously being used for cooling, downforce, or general aerodynamic benefits such as keeping the interior noise levels down. The RCF comes standard with LED low beam headlamps and separate LED daytime running lights. Our tester on the other hand features the optional triple beam bifunction LED headlamps. Large cooling ducts in the front fascia supply air to the oil coolers and front brakes. L-shaped fender vents behind the front tires further add to brake cooling and reduce positive pressure for added downforce. The air travels down the body sides to pronounced corners in the rear bumper that helps keep the airflow smooth, supporting the effects of the four-link active rear wing that automatically deploys around 50 miles an hour and the small aero stabilizing fins on the A pillars and tail lamps. A bulging hood hints at the V8 underneath and features a mesh grill to evacuate hot air from the engine and pass it over the windshield and roof line. The dramatic upswept trunk edge smooths airflow from the roof when the wing isn't deployed. Lexus tuned the vehicle's flat underbody applying aerodynamic undercovers and more air stabilizing fins. A diffuser at the bottom edge of the rear bumper draws air from under the car. Front and rear wheel spats divert air away from the tires while front fender liners are designed to help direct airflow along the tires in the direction of wheel rotation all in an effort to reduce turbulence. The rear fender liner has a bead to direct airflow generated by the tires to the outside of the vehicle. As we discussed prior, the F builds upon the RC's chassis to make it more suitable for track use. The front section is based on the GS but with increased apron panel thickness. The center floor section is based on the ISC with a significantly enlarged rocker structure to ensure a rigid structure with having two doors. The rear floor is based on the IS sedan with added center floor reinforcements. It's not a two-door IS and was designed and built as a standalone model, yielding a unique driving profile compared to anything else in the lineup. The F's exclusive elements start with an engine compartment brace that joins the front suspension towers and a substantial V-shaped rear partition brace to reduce chassis flex. A cowl brace connects the front pillar section and apron member and is said to enhance steering response and roll feel through the corners. The rear suspension member mounts were also strengthened to ensure maximum traction with the bespoke wheel and tire package. While the RC isn't exactly a lightweight, weighing about 170 pounds more than the ISF, when you compare the raw specs, 40% of its body is made from high tensile steel, in addition to aluminum to help minimize weight. The hood is made from aluminum, as are the bumper reinforcements. The RCF even offers the option of a carbon fiber reinforced plastic roof and rear spoiler, helping reduce weight up top and lower the center of gravity a bit. There's three exclusive wheel and tire packages available for the RCF. Wrapped in a staggered set of high-performance 255-35 front and 275-35 rear tires, all wheels measure 19 inches in diameter and are made from forged aluminum for reduced unsprung weight. Our tester is equipped with the optional 20-spoke hand-polished wheels, a very intricate and detailed design. Together this allows the RC to pull an estimated 0.95G of lateral acceleration. The RCF also features an exclusive brake package that consists of large 15 by 1.3 inch spiral fins slotted and ventilated front rotors, with enhanced brake cooling and a vertical G sensor as part of the analog braking system. Lexus states the sensor allows for a change in vertical loads, helping optimize control of braking force the instant load returns to the tires after jumping a crest. Compared to the ISF, the rotor diameter in front has been increased by 0.8 inches. The 13.6 by 1.1 inch slotted and ventilated rear discs are wider by 0.2 inches. They're paired with 6 piston and 4 piston calipers respectively. With this setup, the car can be brought to a stop from 60 miles an hour in less than 110 feet. 70% of the RCF's double wishbone front and multi-link rear suspension parts are unique compared to the RC350. 
Upgrades include new front and rear springs, dampers, and stabilizer bars, as well as suspension bushings and rebound stoppers. The steering knuckle and front lower control arms are redesigned to alter the kingpin offset. At the rear, all five of the suspension arms and the tow control bracket have been redesigned to give new geometry and reduce unsprung weight by optimizing for rigidity and incorporating more lightweight materials such as forged aluminum. Increased camber and tow angles further improve cornering ability and reduce the required steering angle. The RCF drives like a proper sports car. It feels extremely stiff and agile despite what some may think based on its weight. I didn't notice any kind of body roll during spirited driving. The ride quality was a bit rough for my taste at times, but all in all Lexus did a great job with suspension tuning and responsiveness. Overall length is 185.2 inches with a width of 72.6 inches and a height of 54.7 inches, riding on a 107.5 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight as you see here is around 3,958 pounds. At the heart of the RCF is a thoroughly redesigned version of the all aluminum 5 liter V8 that originally powered the ISF. While the block remains the same, new cylinder heads, higher compression, and lighter internal components are just some of the many updates to help the engine boost power and rev higher than the previous mill. The dual overhead cam design still features four valves per cylinder, dual variable valve timing, and a combination of direct and port fuel injection. Compression ratio is now rated at 12.3 to 1, up from 11.8 to 1, while max revs peak at 7,100 RPM versus 6,800 RPM in the ISF. Lexus says they've also improved cooling for the engine and transmission to better handle track days. Other unique F-bits include titanium valves, forged connecting rods, an optimized stainless steel exhaust system, and an air-cooled oil cooler. The engine now develops 467 horsepower at 7,100 RPM and 389 pound-feet of torque between 4,800 and 5,600 RPM. That's 51 horsepower and 18 pound-feet of torque greater than the ISF. Estimated 0-60 to 60 time is 4.4 seconds with a quarter mile time of 12.5 seconds and a top speed limited to 170 miles an hour. It should go without saying that the F is quite fast. It'll easily trip the tires in second gear and puts you back in the seat. I love the fact that it continues on with a V8, a fantastic engine overall. Responsive and lively, this thing loves to rev. Electronically enhanced sound almost has become commonplace nowadays, and as good as the car sounds with its two-stage intake that opens up at higher RPMs, the well-insulated cabin prevents you from experiencing it to the fullest. In comes a system called Active Sound Control, or ASC, which augments the car's natural engine and intake sounds through a dedicated actuator mounted underneath the instrument panel. It's only activated in Sport Plus mode and blends the car's natural sounds to about a 50-50 ratio. The level of sound depends on the RPMs the engine is running at, dramatically changing with increased speeds to a note that's somewhat reminiscent to an LFA supercar. As far as fuel economy, with a 17.4 gallon tank and required premium fuel, EPA estimates range between 16 miles to a gallon in the city and 25 on the highway, averaging around 19 miles to a gallon. One of my favorite things about the RC styling-wise is how distinctive the interior is, especially the F, which adds some bespoke elements. It strays from the norm from what you'd expect from Lexus, very unique and exciting. It's also highly detailed with many visual layers and a variety of high-grade materials. As expected, build quality is excellent. Just about every surface is wrapped in soft-touch materials, decorated by accent stitching and highlighted by brushed aluminum, Alcantara bits, and this car's optional carbon fiber trim pieces. While some portions of the center console are reminiscent to the IS sedan, there's plenty that sets the RC apart, giving it a proper sport coupe vibe. Black perforated new lux or synthetic leather is the standard seating material for the RCF. Our tester features the optional leather upholstery. The leather is very soft and supple, but where it really stands out is the unique stitch pattern across the middle portions of the seat. That really distinguishes itself from the new lux. It's beautiful in person. Both front seats are fully powered with the driver's seat gaining two-way adjustable lumbar. Also, compared to the RC350 F Sport we recently tested, these seats are a lot more aggressive. There's more lateral support up top and down below, a flared upper backrest with some faux racing harness ports, as well as a fixed headrest with the embossed F logo. They're form fitting, they really hug your body. They're on the firm side, but they do a great job in supporting you around the corners. There's an aluminum door sill entry guard, logoed floor mats with very plushy carpeting, not to mention aluminum sport pedals. A power tilt telescoping steering wheel comes standard, as do knee airbags. It took me a little while to get used to the dash, there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's a lot of really cool detail that really needs to be experienced in person. The headliner is black and features a sunroof. So let's go ahead and see how she sounds, both sitting still and on the road.
So aside from the seats, instrument cluster, and general styling upgrades of the RCF, the overall interior features and functionality really don't differ across the RC lineup. So if you want to see a little bit more about how it all works and the optional features, click the link in the top right hand corner of the video to go to my RC350 F-Sport review. So let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll check out the back seat. So to get access to the back seat, if you have your seatbelt in this little seatbelt holder right here, you're going to want to unclip it and undo that, but then grab the handle and tip it forward. It stays in place and then it electrically slides forward all its own. Alright guys, so while we briefly talked about the back seat in the RC350 F-Sport review, I did not hop in the back, so let's go ahead and do that. The biggest caveat with this car, I think it's more of like a 2 plus 2 because I'm five foot ten, and there's really no appreciable room back here. I mean, with a comfortable seating position for myself up front, the seat automatically encroaches upon my legs, but what's cool about that is that if it detects the object behind it, it will stop and move up about an inch so it won't pinch you. It'll give you a little bit of extra breathing space. That being said, it's a very, very intimate cabin back here. Maybe if you're five and a half feet, children, smaller individuals, you'd be a lot more comfortable back here but I don't have any headroom. I'm actually cocked off to the side with um, the rake of the, the side profile right here. But I mean, despite the lack of interior space for taller people, it's really nice back here. Just like the front, the back seat is appointed very similarly. I mean, you have the soft padded material up top, armrest, the Alcantara um, side panel inserts and red accent stitching. All of the speakers back here attribute to the whole surround sound experience. And the seats are also unique. Unlike the RC350 and just like the front, the back seat of the RCF also has fixed headrest instead of the adjustable kind. With the leather interior, you have the unique uh, stitch pattern across the middle, not to mention the perforations. You have child seat anchors on both sides, not to mention a padded armrest in the middle with a trunk pass-through that you can open up if you need to stow some larger items. Attention to detail is fantastic. There's LED illumination back here. And unique to the F, instead of having just a little bit of a tray right here for the, um, the RC350, you can pull this back and there are two cup holders. So you actually have a little bit of extra practicality, which is nice. Another nice feature I think is pretty cool, just adds an extra premium touch. You do have two air vents back here. So even though this is a very small cabin, relatively speaking, to something larger, you have air, extra air vents to make sure everybody's nice and cooled all the time. 
The seats are also relatively comfortable. I mean, they have good padding in them. They're a little bit on the firm side, but you do have good lower back support. Not a whole lot in terms of lateral support, but you got this armrest right here if you wanted to have a little bit of extra grip. But really, that's, that's pretty much it. The entire back portion of the seats right here are wrapped in padded material, and you have two storage pockets, not to mention coat hooks and the side airbags for everybody. So let's go ahead and check out the rest of the vehicle. Outback, the RC has around 10.4 cubic feet of cargo space, which seems pretty decent. It's not huge, but practical enough that I believe you could take an extended vacation with two people. The trunk hinges are hidden away to not impede on cargo space. There's cargo tie downs to secure your items and a first aid kit off to the right. On the passenger seat, you'll find the same power adjustments that you find on the driver's seat, only it doesn't have the additional lumbar. Across the passenger side, you also have the padded dash, but down below here, you have an extra strip of carbon fiber and a lockable glove box. Pretty modest amount of space, just enough for your large owner's manual, some extra storage off to the side. If you're looking for something distinct and different, the Lexus RC should definitely be on your list to consider. It offers a lot of performance and luxury with an unmistakable style. <laughs> 